Where better to be on a Friday night in the summer than Montreal tonight? The defending Grey Cup champion Stampeders visit the Alouettes on Wendy's Friday Night Football. 23-year-old Rakeem Cato for the Montreal Alouettes was not on the roster last week. He gets his first start out of Marshall. He's won at every single level, including back in high school. And his final season at Marshall, 13-1, and was 6-6 six and six in preseason action against Ottawa. He's up against Bo Levi Mitchell for the first time in his career through three interceptions last week, but got the win, and that's all that matters. He's 16-2 and two as a starter. Well, John Huffnagel liked his team's resilience last week in week one, a victory over Hamilton on a late field goal, but says there's a lot to clean up. And on the other sideline, Tom Higgins' team looking for its first win of 2015. He has 12 starters over 30 years of age and two quarterbacks we expect to play with a combined CFL experience in the preseason and regular season of 37 plays. So quite a contrast indeed. The most veteran team in the league with the youngest quarterbacks. Cedric Cunningham is in the lineup, a late scratch for Calgary. Jeff Fuller, so Cunningham will handle returns tonight along with Matt Walter. And there is the Laval product, Boris Bidet, who has created quite a stir. And BD teams it up, and here we go. And it will be Cunningham. From the Calgary goal line. Flag down as he crosses the 26. Again, Jeff Fuller, a late scratch. He was one of the players of the week in that victory over Hamilton with nine catches, 148 yards. And Cunningham called upon here. Tim Croker in charge. Holding, Calgary number 94. 10 yard penalty. First down. Frank Beltre called on the hold. Well, Levi Mitchell, 8 0 on the road. Threw three interceptions last week. Bounced back from that. Actually graded out very well in the game. There's Joe West. Just two catches last week, but he's going to move into Jeff Fuller's spot. Cedric Cunningham comes on the roster. John Cornish, below his average from a year ago, played half the season, was over seven yards rushing per carry. Under that in game one, a quiet 70 yards for Cornish. First three interception game ever for Bo Levi Mitchell. Stamp start at their own 10 yard line, short drop, and throws to the outside incomplete. That was the Jeff Fuller territory last week. Joe West, the intended target this time. He'll be up against Jonathan Hefney over there in that short side corner. And Hefney got off to a good start. Former Winnipeg Blue Bomber had a pick for the Montreal Alouettes a week ago, as did halfback Billy Parker in his seventh year. Leading tackler and captain of this defense is Bear Woods. Stamps had 148 yards offense in their first two series last week, and then they got quiet until the final possession of the game. Second and ten. Here comes the rush. Mitchell stands in and delivers, and it's a first down connection to Eric Rogers. Five catches, 62 yards, and a touchdown for Rogers in the CFL opener. Bo Levi Mitchell, look at him. Look off the safety. Number 10 right in the middle of your screen. He is, he's looking to his right to try and draw that safety away from the dig route. He knows he's coming back from the left side of the formation to Eric Rogers. 20 yards and a first down up at the Calgary 30 yard line. First carry of the game for Cornish, and he'll move it five yards ahead. Again, 70 yards for Cornish last week in a game in which he passed Willie Burden on Calgary's all-time rushing list. Yeah, you know, it was a quiet 70 yards, and Bo Levi Mitchell, we talked about his interceptions, but he graded up well when you look back at the game film. That's according to the coaching staff for the Stampeders, and championship teams, great teams find ways to win. Sometimes it can be ugly, and give credit to Hamilton and their effort a week ago. Went right down to the wire. Give Cornish four, second and six. Here's the safety blitz, gets it in the hands of Campo, and Campo has a first down up across the 40-yard line. Simon Charbonneau Campo, who did not have a catch last week. Sherbrooke Project. 
already success for Calgary offensively to get out of that shadow of their goal post. So even if this drive stalls, they regain some field position after the penalty in the opening kickoff. Nice catch over the middle by the Canadian out of Sherbrooke. So a pair of first downs on this. First possession for the Stampeders. Flag down and but a time count against the Stamps. Procedure call. Had a couple of time count penalties last week. Procedure, Calgary number 16. Five yard penalty for stop. Markway McDaniel, veteran receiver. He had a quiet week. Fuller got all the action last week. Targeted 11 times. Yeah, late the opener. Real late scratch. So we'll see Joe West in that spot. And they're in the middle of the field now, so they can flop those guys on either side. But when they get into the hash mark, West will primarily be in the short side of the field. McDaniel had only two balls thrown his way last week, one catch. And on first and 15 corners, get back and just beyond the original line of scrimmage. You mentioned the touches for Cornish. He just had 13 carries. I mentioned the quiet 70 yards and well below his average at 5.4 yards per carry. Career-wise, he's over seven. Lots of talk at the beginning of the season and questions as to whether or not Cornish could get to 2,000 this year. Last guy to do it here. Play here, Mike Pringle. And he's got another strike hit first down. Again, it's Simon Sherman Ocampo up across midfield and into Alouette territory. Yeah, Campo is a nice little dig route here. He's just gonna just gonna run down and, and pull that into the middle again. That's that danger area. He knows he's gonna get hit, but Bo throws it right in the hole. A little bit of a zone defense, and you can see inside Chip Cox working inside out, and Mitchell White coming outside in, and they just found the hole. That Alouette defense, the strength of their team last season, giving up three consecutive first downs. going east-west, not north-south. If you get his shoulders heading towards the sideline and he has to chop his feet and slow his momentum, then you've got a chance against the best running back in the league. Well played by Gabriel Napton. Loss of one, second and 11. Just nudging into Montreal territory. Four-man rush, time for Mitchell again, and the pass is incomplete. Mitchell White in the coverage out of Michigan State. And the drive stalls at midfield. Yeah, it looked like it was Cedric Cunningham running that curl route. Again, the ball is put right where it has to be on the outside shoulder. And, and Mitchell puts it there, just slides right through the hands of a guy who was put on the roster moments ago today. Well, we're going to talk a lot about the strong leg of Boris Speedy, but Rob Maver, 56.4 yard average in the opener. Blast that to Logan back at the five. And the special teams captain is contained at the 13 yard line. 49 yard punt. Rakeem Cato out of Marshall gets his first CFL start when we return. 131 touchdowns, eighth all time in NCAA history. Rakeem Cato gets his first Canadian Football League start. And it begins at the yellow at 15. He'll hand it off to Terrell Sutton as they try and help out a young rookie with 
a little bit of ground game. Well, he's won at every level. Back in the high school level as a state champion, you mentioned Marshall. There's his numbers in the preseason, completing 100% of his passes, six for six. Brandon Bridge is up there, and I put him up there because the competition to start was tight throughout the week. They split first team reps, and it was a gut feeling by the coaching staff. I know that starters, and of course, Nick Lewis is gonna play against his old team today. Four for Sutton, first pass for Cato is on the mark, and it's a first down. Pass out of the backfield to Samuel Jaguer, another Sherbrooke product. Now first throw as a pro in this first start for Rakeem Cato. He's not a big guy, just six foot, 178 pounds. Doesn't have a cannon of an arm, but you can see he's got the accuracy and puts it right on his receiver. Shiguer without a catch last week as the initial first down for Montreal. And now into the hands of S.J. Green. That's a good idea. Get this guy the ball. And S.J. Green has another elbow at first down across the 50. It's a pretty good adjustment there by S.J. Green, who only had a couple of catches in week one. He had to go right to the back sh shoulder to pick that up as he's going to catch that little swing pass out in the flat. And when he does, there's number 19. You see how he has to go back away from the line of scrimmage. But then does a nice job running with the football after it. The catch. 21 yards for the nine-year vet. And a first down for the Alouettes. Back into the hands of Sutton off the right side. And he'll crash across midfield and carry the pile for another Montreal first down. With these young quarterbacks in the game, this is going to be the key player offensively for Montreal in this game tonight. Terrell Sutton's got to have success on first down. In game one, he had just 11 carries. He had 70 yards as well, matching corners. But if he can get Rakeem Cato in a second and short, second and medium situations, three to five yards, way better chance for success for the young quarterback. Alouette's averaged 3.1 yards on first down last week, 12 for Sutton. Another first down, and he'll swing it out of the backfield to Sutton. And that's another first down, three consecutive plays, netting first downs against a stingy championship-level defense. And Rich Stubler's already in a lather at the Stampeder bench. Well, they've got to do it without their captain in the middle, Juwan Simpson. That's the one change. They'll move Glenn Love into the middle. Charleston Hughes got off to a great start with two sacks in game one in 2015. Man, and Keon Raymond, 95-yard interception touchdown. And Terrell Sutton over there with Rich Stubler. Not sure that was Bonjour. Sutton again. Down to the 32-yard line. Four for Sutton and Rakeem Cato has the offense moving. Well, if, if he's nervous, he's hiding it well. 13-1 and one in his final year at Marshall. State championship at the high school level. And in his bowl games, uh, he's just three and zero. One at every level. So it's the thundering herd against the Stampeders here tonight. Second and six. Oh, they're going to send the blitz. He's got an open man. Nick Lewis, former Stampeder, first catch against his old team. He's inside the ten, and he just keeps bowling down that field. <laughs> Talked to Nick Lewis, asked him, hey, how confident are you in Rakeem Cato in his first start? He said, listen, there is something to be said about a quarterback who just flat out finds ways to win games, and that's all this kid has ever done. Had a real tough upbringing in Liberty City, Miami, and he's just outside of Miami, and, and Nick Lewis said they've got lots of confidence in him. How about this start? And remember, he was perfect six for six in the preseason. Hands it off straight ahead and down to the five. Well, what's been amazing, really, in this first drive for Rakeem Cato, remember, he was not on the roster last week. And what I've been impressed with is how quickly he is making decisions to get rid of the football, whether it be that little swing pass to Terrell Sutton, whether it be that that fly screen over there to S.J. Green earlier in the drive. He's knows where to go with the football immediately. 
Alouette scored a touchdown on their first possession last week. And now second and goal, ninth play of the drive. Gator out of the road. Into the end zone. Touchdown. <laughs> Samuel Jaguar has his first Montreal touchdown. And welcome to the CFL, Rakeem Cato. How about that? 7 of 7 on the drive with a touchdown throw. Nice play calling by Turk Schoenert as well. Get the kid outside, uses athletic ability, throws on the run. How about that accuracy to Samuel Jaguer? What a drive. Make you believe in her. And now the 32-yard convert attempt. Oh, little bobble on the hold, but Beattie nails it. Nine plays, 95 yards, and a touchdown pass to Samuel Chaguer as the Alouettes strike first. Samuel Chaguer playing in just his second game as an Alouette. Back in his home province with his first touchdown delivered by the rookie, Rakeem Cato. Tim Brown back. Awaits the BD kickoff. Into the corner at the three. And Brown up across the 20. And ridden down by Darren Kitchens. Well, an opening possession touchdown. Didn't look like a rookie on that drive. 7-0 Owls. What an opening drive for rookie Rakeem Cato out of Marshall, completing all five of his pass attempts in the first drive. 95 yards, nine plays, mixed in four running. I love how quickly and how he read the defense, how quickly he got the ball out of his hands in that opening drive. Told he was warming up about 3 o'clock this afternoon. That's a little earlier than usual. He started on time tonight, didn't he? Well, the Stamps did not lead until the final play last week. Down by a touchdown, and John Corner stuffed on the opening play of their second possession. Gabriel Napton there to put a quick halt to that play. Well, you mentioned Bo grading out well. He, on his reads, he graded out beyond 90% last week. But a couple of mistakes, including an interception in the end zone, that's not to drive. And there's another mistake by the offense as Eric Rogers, Eric Rogers is five yards downfield before the snap of the ball. Yeah, this Calgary team last week was a minus four. Offside. Calgary number 80, five-yard penalty, second down. A minus four in the give takeaway department and won the game, and that almost never happens. Right. Dave Dickinson took a good hard look at the film, thought that Bo played well, but for a couple of plays, of course, throws he'd like back. But John Huffnagel told us beginning of last week he wants to see Bo Levi Mitchell continue to develop and overcome adversity as this season goes on. So second and 13, Mitchell over the middle, and Markway McDaniel makes a brilliant catch. There he is. Favorite receiver last year, and that's why. You know, I think, I think Mitchell put a little more on this just because it's in that danger area coming right over the middle, and there's a lot of Montreal bodies there, so he put some zip on it. Markway McDaniel had to lay out to go and get it. of Cornish and they're having trouble establishing the ground game with Bear Woods 
the second leading tackler in the league last year, 89 tackles in the middle of that defense at middle linebacker. So he just, I mean, he has no choice but to be great. Bear Woods with that name, number one, and then went to Troy and played for the Trojans. I mean, the captain of the defense led the team last week, and he's all over the place again tonight. All CFL last year, second and seven. Mitchell looking downfield, and Rogers can't make the circus catch. And the Stamps will have to punt it away. Trail technique on the coverage. And I thought it was Gerald Brown that got matched up on Eric Rogers and just hung with it. There's there's your receiver in that number two hole comes up you can you can jam inside of five yards from the line of scrimmage and you can see there's a little slight push and then looks back and knocks the ball out of there and we are getting a challenge from the Stampeder bench and the hands on the eight would indicate that Calgary is challenging. Yeah, they may I, have a case. Yeah, I'm not sure though. I mean, you could see the 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 touch by Gerald Brown. I'm not sure it impeded or changed the direction of Rogers. It's be interesting. So, command center will take a look and we'll come back with the verdict after this. There was a suggestion that video replay would make things black and white, and yet, boy, there's still some gray. We saw a controversial yeah. one last night. Ken Austin wasn't happy with a call that Matt Dunnigan thought was the right call, and and even here, this is this isn't an easy decision, is it? No, it's it's not. First, first of all, this is a pass interference decision, not illegal contact, so it has nothing to do with the new rules because the ball was thrown to Rogers. The question is, did did that touch by the right hand on the shoulder pad? impede or or push Rodgers out of a chance to catch the football. I don't think it did. I mean, he goes up. I, I may be wrong on this one, but I'm going to take Gerald Brown's side on here and say that Rodgers had a crack at it. Well, let's find out. After review, we have pass interference, Montreal number 39. Ball will be placed at the 47-yard line. I'm with the fans in Montreal. I'm going to boo that car. <laughs> no, you know, that one was a close one, and that's why I said I'm, I may be wrong on that because he did make contact with him with the right arm and the right hand to the shoulder pads. But you're still a member in good standing of the <laughs> defensive back union. <laughs> Eight-year veteran, Eastern All-Star Gerald Brown. Well, they, when not I not convinced. When I hear Milt Stiegel on the panel give the receiver the benefit of the doubt every time, I've got to side with those guys every now and then. But it was a close one, and a good challenge by John Hufnagel. Keeps the offense on the field, and actually now the deepest penetration for the Stampeders here in the opening quarter to the Montreal 47. <laughs> First down stamps. And Alouettes thought somebody moved on that offensive line. Mitchell spins and throws it incomplete. Look for Cunningham and that play didn't look well executed. Yeah, there was some interesting back and forth there between Winston Venable and I think it was Dan Faderkyle on the outside at tackle who Venable kind of wanted to go on the blitz. He jumped into the neutral zone, jumped back out of it before the snap of the ball, so he didn't get offside call, and officials didn't see any movement from that old line. So it's second and ten. Now show pressure, and they bring it, and get to the quarterback. A flag flies, however, as Mitchell taken down back on Calgary's side of half. And it looks like it's going to be against the Stampeders, a holding call, so the, st the sack will stand. Holding, Calgary number 65, Pelly's decline, third down. Yeah, that's Michael Klassen, and he just, he just beats his man right down Main Street. Former Calgary dinosaur. Yes, sir, and he's just going to come. A little, little stunt on the outside, but watch number nine. He just swat the hands down up here, Laver two, and get straight back into the kitchen of Bo Levi Mitchell. 
So Maver to punt. Logan is back. Not a deep kick. Logan fielding it. Ducks under the initial contact and tripped up on the 13-yard line. We got a flag back at midfield as the punt rolled for Maver for a 45-yarder. So did the Stampeders proceed downfield before the kick? Illegally downfield on a kick. Calgary number 42, 10 yard penalty. They're done. Deron Mayo and they're gonna have to do it again. Interior five on the punt cover team cannot leave until Maver kicks the football. That's a new rule change this year. So you give yourself a two count. If you're in that interior and then you take off. And is that the first time we've seen it? First time in our in our games, yes. But it, ha it it's called a few times in the preseason. See Randy Chevrier, veteran and a St. Leonard native, the long snapper. Back in the lineup for the Stampeders. Mavers sails this and Logan will take it on the fly at the 18. Let's check in with John Lou. Well, thank you, Chris. And for 11 seasons and two great cups, Nick Lewis knew only one set of CFL cover colors. And so last Sunday afternoon, he sent out this tweet. So weird to be in a meeting to game plan against Calgary. I guess it just now really hit me looking forward to the challenge. And we should emphasize he sent that tweet out after the meeting, not during. And what was <laughs> weird to that, uh, to Lewis about that is the fact that uh, for the first time in his life, he was reviewing tape of the Calgary defense. And his takeaway from that was a new appreciation for former teammates like Keon Raymond and Brandon Smith. And he also understood just how much communication and trust was necessary for Rich Stubler's defense to work the way it does. And if those were his civilized words, now that it's game on, his former Calgary teammates expect Lewis's renowned trash-talking game to be on point tonight. Guys? I think well, he did send another tweet to say, don't forget the ring, which yeah. the Stampeders presented to him yesterday. Well, and John Huffnagel, when asked about playing against Nick Lewis said, I'll hear him before I see him. <laughs> Final play, first quarter, second down, pass underneath, and S.J. Green the catch, but Jeff Hecht, a former Alouette, steps up to put the stop on Green. Great start, though, for Rakeem Cato, an opening touchdown. To as the Alouettes look for their first win of the year, up against the Great Cup champs. Let's check the numbers after 15 minutes here at Percival Molson. Well, what jumps out is the play of Rakeem Cato. His very first start wasn't on the roster last week. He's six foot tall, 178 pounds soaking wet. Doesn't have a powerful arm. He's six for six with a touchdown throw on a 95-yard opening drive. He looked great. Expect to see Brandon Bridge tonight, and we likely will in short yardage, but Milt might get his way if Cato keeps playing like this. Be hard to put Bridge in, wouldn't it? Yeah, and, and both quarterbacks said yesterday that it, it's going to be the hot hand that stays out here right now. That's definitely Rakeem Cato. And by the way, Cato got a little help on first down from some key runs from Terrell Sutton. Success on first down in that opening 95-yard drive. They were 7.8 yards on first down. That helps a young quarterback. Should emphasize that Bridge and Cato are the fourth and fifth quarterbacks that the Alouettes have used already this season. There's Beatty off the side of his foot, but it will roll inside the 20-yard line and no return as it's marked at the 17. So Mitchell leads Calgary's offense back. Didn't play in the game here last year in Montreal. Stampeders' only road loss was here on the campus of McGill. 
tough to win here when you're coming from the West. Time change you're dealing with and then and I'm not suggesting this happened with Calgary last year, but there are distractions, there are in, distractions this, in this city. We won't detail all of those, no. Here's Cornish. Will cut back, John Bowman can't bring him down, and there's Cornish's best run so far tonight. Yeah, they've, they've been consistent offensively. Dave Dickinson trying to continue to keep John Cornish involved, involved in the offense and continue to try and establish him. And this is the first time he actually picked up some yards on this great cutback for Cornish back against the flow. Bowman dives and can't arm tackle him. Not many can when it comes to number nine. It takes the entire defense bring him down sometimes. Chip Cox finished the job there, but not before. Cornish has a 10-yard run and a first down. 12 yards his longest last week. Throwing downfield and overshoots the intended target, Cedric Cunningham. Mitchell White at wide side corner was, was step for step with Cunningham. I mean, he was right in his hip pocket. And, and I think Bo Levi Mitchell shaking his head there saw that. And on this go route, he, he had to throw it out there and hope that Cunningham could run under it. Because look at the coverage by 32 at the top of your screen. He's running the route for him. So it's second and 10. Here comes the heat. And another sack for the Alouette defense that had 51 last year, third in the league. And that's the 84th career sack for the veteran, John Bowman. And that leads all Montreal Alouettes from his familiar stand-up position at that rush end and just great hands as he gets his hands up and knocks down Edward Harrison in his set to try and pass protect and gets to Mitchell. That's the sixth sack allowed by the Stampeders this year. Only 26 all of last season. Maver boots it away, short kick at midfield. It's Logan ducking away and bubbling back on his own side of half. Does he have something? Yes, he does. Wants a block, but Maver gets there. What a play by Rob Maver to avoid a block prevent a touchdown. Logan goes 24 on the return. How about the 34-year-old Stephon Logan? Looks like he's got some young legs still. And the young quarterback set up by the veteran Logan when we come back. And an old teammate, Stefan Logan. Three years with the BC Lions. Nice 24-yard return there. Set up for Keem Cato. Hand off inside, Sutton's got a hole. Crashing down to the 23. Stefan Logan's gonna take advantage of the rule changes here because watch the space he has enough to catch this ball, take a look up, reverse his field, go back on the other side to set up basically a wall return to the wide field. He's got some help and some blocks. 24 yards later, Maver brings him down. If not for Maver, he may score there. And good field position for Montreal, but those interior guys are not getting down as fast as they did last year. So there's Brandon Bridge into the game on second and two. That's long range for a quarterback sneak. Might have to do it again. Well, we saw him last week, five for 10, 62 yards. The St. Marcellus Secondary School product out of Mississauga and Southern Alabama. Completed 50% of his passes the second half last week. Third and with the spot of the ball, still about a yard. Jeff Parrott going to the sidelines momentarily to get a helmet adjustment. Top offensive lineman in the league last week, or last season. Well, you can see third and one. 
And this is going to be close. There is a flag on the play. Working in behind Christian Matt out of Concordia at the left guard and Josh Burke. Glenn Love goes up over the top. And he gets some pretty good contact immediately. But will he have been offside? Offside, Calgary defensive line. Five yard penalty. There's Love, 36. But the whole line a little bit offside into that neutral zone. Tom Higgins said we will see both tonight. But if Rakeem Cato stays hot, I'm not sure if we'll see Brandon Bridge play quarterback in regular offense. Beyond short yard, yes, there's a, another completion, and Fred Stamps has got it, but he can't turn it upfield against Jamar Wall. Fred Stamps with catch number 499 of his career. Closing in on 8,000 yards, and his next touchdown will be number 50, so he's rounding out his numbers. Move him around. He played a little bit outside last week. Official get that f first down marker on the ground and, and duck and find cover. And Marty Carroll, the head linesman, taken <coughs> down, but he bounces back into the action. here because he he knows that that SJ Green just slipped on the on the comeback he threw it right to the spot he was expecting his receiver to come back to and he slipped and fell buddy Jackson was in coverage and here's BD one for one last week hit a 37 yarder this from 23 and he fires that through. And the Alouettes have a 10 point lead here in the second quarter in Montreal. Sam back in the Alouette camp and with more on him, John Liu. Well, thank you, Chris. And one of the questions was when Michael Sam did return to the team, how would he be uh, how would he be greeted by his teammates? Well, last Sunday, prior to the Alouette's team meeting, Sam requested and was granted permission to speak to his teammates as a group behind closed doors with none of the coaches present. He spoke for approximately one minute. Prior to the game today, TSN spoke to one long-standing and respected Alouette's veteran who said that he would not disclose the content of Sam's address to the team, but said that by talking to his teammates the way he did, Sam regained the confidence, the trust, and the respect of his teammates with respect to why he left two weeks ago and added that, quote, we as a team are fine with him, end quote. Guys? Just saw a big play by the Stampeders. It's coming back. Another holding call will negate that big throw to Eric Rogers. And Tom Higgins says three to four weeks, Michael Sam has to get into CFL shape mm -hmm. before he's ready to go. Well, first of all, he left a couple weeks ago for personal matters, and, and that will remain personal. Legal block hands from the face. Calgary number 50. Ten-yard penalty. First up. Right guard Spencer Wilson. But the discussion is, is really a simple one as far as I'm concerned with Michael Sam. Can he make the football team? Is he good enough to play for the Montreal Alouettes? When you look at the guys they've got in the position, which John Bowman and Gabriel Napton, can he be a rotation player? He's on the 46 tonight and scratched before the game. Good sign there, those suits. They thought he was a little heavy, but you notice he wasn't eating there by the room. <laughs> 
So first and 20, and it's Markway McDaniel to catch. He is dropped back at the at the 39-yard line, so that's 14 on the pickup. Well, it, it's obviously a, a story that transcends the game. It, it's bigger than the game of football itself, but it really can be simplified to Michael Sam earning the trust of his teammates. The guys don't care as long as you can help them win football games. And if Michael Sam can do that, he'll make this team and he'll contribute and there'll be no problems. But if he makes it on his celebrity alone, that will hurt the locker room. Second and six, Mitchell stands in. Can't connect with Rodgers, who looked like he stumbled out of the break. And it will be third down. And that's really the, you know, the crux of it. It will divide and cause problems and issues in the locker room if, if Michael Sam makes the football team on his celebrity. And if he makes it on his merit as a football player, no problems. If he helps the Alouettes win games, his teammates will welcome him into that room and it'll be no issues at all. Now he's got to get into CFL shape, and it's different. 20-second clocks. You got to get out there. You got to run. Wider field. Dancing with the Stars isn't the best training regiment. Is no. that what you're saying? No, it's not. Tom Higgins said, as you mentioned, probably three or four weeks, you may see him on the roster. Maver to kick. High, but not deep. Logan, 36-yard line. And he'll be pushed out at the 38. Glenn Love downfield to limit the return. After a 35-yard punt, Alouettes continue to lead. Nice gesture by the Alouettes prior to the game. God bless America was sung, and we'd like to say hello to all the fans south of the border watching on ESPN2. Happy 4th of July weekend. Yeah. You've got a uh, big, big weekend, so I want to say a special hello to all the friends and family down in Nashville, Tennessee, Music City, spending a lot of time down there, and I know there's a group of fans down there that watch at the local sports bar bars right there on Broadway. Noticing a real Twitter buzz uh, south of the border for the games, and I imagine that's the case in Huntington, West Virginia tonight, home of Marshall University. Kato oh. He almost got welcomed to the Canadian Football League by Buddy Jackson. Well, and, and this is timing because he, this is an out cut here, and the ball's got to be thrown right now, just before he gets to the break. And you watch Cato here is going to hold the ball just a split second too long. Ball's got to be out now. Two steps, three steps by Stamps. Now the ball's late, and Buddy Jackson's got a shot at it. All he did was forget to catch it. So that's the second two and out of this game for Cato's offense. Beattie. And it's fielded by Tim Brown, 21 yard line. And Tim Brown was good last week and another fine return here up to the 43, but a flag comes down. See what this penalty is. It's against Calgary. It's it's their seventh of this game. Montreal has not drawn a flag. Least penalized team last year, the Stampeders, but for the challenge by John Huffnagel. During the return, holding Calgary number 33. That's the seventh for them. For some. That's Shamari Williams drawing the flag, and it's back at the 30. Well, a champion will be crowned in the FIFA Women's World Cup Final Sunday when reigning champion Japan defends their title against the USA. The action kicks off 6.30 Eastern through 3.30 Pacific on CTV and TSN. And hats off to all the folks at CTV and TSN who have been involved with that coverage over the last month. John Cornish, short gain. 
against the fired up Montreal defense. Both defensive ends, John Bowman and, and Napton, are, are able to key on John Cornish. They, they know they're going to try and feed him the football. Look how wide Bowman is and how quickly he'll close down that gap and close in on John Cornish. No play action fake. Bo Levi Mitchell could almost hold that ball in the stomach of John Cornish a little bit longer, try and hold Bowman and Napton outside. Eight carries, 34 yards for Cornish. Second and seven, three receivers near side. Mitchell looks the other way. And incomplete. Joe West unable to bring it in one-handed. And the Stamps will have to boot it away. Open. And I think Mitchell will tell you that this one's on 19, just a little bit low and away and tough for big Joe West to go down there and get. You can see he opens up on the slant route. Although he's not going to say it, but I'm thinking Jeff Fuller might have pulled that one in because <laughs> he he well, was catching everything last week. If last week's are, are the example of that, then yeah, nine of eleven. Better boot by Maver drives Logan back to his 23. Flag down as Logan is dropped. After a seven yard return, a 54 yard boot by Maver. And a penalty against the Alouettes on the return. During the return, legal block, Montreal number 84. 10 yard penalty, first down. Alex Charette, the rookie called on the return. Well, he was mentored by those two NFL quarterbacks, also from Marshall, Chad Pennington, and Byron Lefwich. And by the end of his tenure, he was the all-time leader. That's pretty good company. 131 touchdowns is fourth most in FBS history. And his 49 consecutive games with a TD pass beat Russell Wilson for the record. Tyrell Sutton with the carry for eight yards. Notice that there was one quarterback in Division I that had the same streak of consecutive passes. You might know him. Name Mike Riley. Ah. You were digging deep in the stats. And we certainly absolutely wish Mike Speedy all the best. recovery. For all the quarterbacks that are getting banged up, Drew Willie yeah. last night. We're told Jonathan Crompton might be a week or two away. Tanner Marsh, not much after that. Oh, there's a ball thrown it through. Nick Lewis gets away. Oh, there he is. The big man ripples to the Calgary 50 yard line. Yeah, great talk with Nick today before the game. And see a little bit of that old Nick Lewis, the guy who could get outside and, and get high stepping when he breaks a tackle. Now Cato threads the needle. He almost got that picked off. Lewis picks it up and then a little high stepping down the sideline. I asked Nick, I said, because he's a big man now. He's he's 240 pounds. I said, you, you went from 82 to 8. Did you do it because 8 is a little more slimming? And he said, no, I'm in shape. And I, I said, well, I guess square is a shape. <laughs> We had some fun on the sideline before the game. That's a nice play. Number 11 on the all-time receiving list. Kato throws another strike. You know, that's Jay Green. That throw, Chris, is confidence beyond his years of experience because when, when you're throwing a curl into the middle, there are linebackers on one side, DBs on the other. Green. I'm impressed. Thunder and Hurd. 11 yards on the latest connection. 
And he's had everybody involved, has he? And they hand it off. Great side. <laughs> Cut down. Buddy Jackson the tackle, but Terrell Sutton has helped his young quarterback with good production on the ground. Eight more. Well, and, and this old line, this, this Canadian old line across the board with Jeff Parrott and Josh Burke on the outsides at tackle. They're starting to impose their will now on a very good Rich Stubler defense. Nice hole off the right side of that formation for Sutton. Seven carries, 47 yards. We've hit the three-minute warning at Percival Molson on a glorious day in Montreal. And the home side with the lead. With his opportunity so far, so good, though. Crompton looks on. Kato going to take a shot into the corner for Stamps. And incomplete. First, first true miss, it looks like. He had al one almost intercepted on t when the timing was off. But this time, Stamps comes out of his break on this corner route. And this is the first true miss from, from Cato. So second and 10 from the 23. Short drop, and now he bounces it outside. On a roll. Anybody home? Looking for Chicago. Did you see that? Samuel Chagall, and it's a first down Montreal. And how about the composure of Rakeem Cato all the way to the sideline, waiting by time. Nick Lewis is open the end zone but he wasn't ready to throw at that point now he's just running out of real estate and lobs it up over the hands of Fred Bennett and Sam Jaguer brings it down for first down and into the red zone third catch for Jaguer 34 yards challenge flag and wondering if the challenge is that Jaguer did he leave the field and come back into play. Stampeders spotters booth has seen something. So we'll find out if that highlight reel catch is going to stand.
did look like Jaguar was tiptoeing along the sidelines, and I wasn't sure if he was still eligible. If he runs out on his own, he can't come in and catch a pass. If he's pushed out, he can. He was right on the sideline. Calgary's challenging the play that the receiver stepped out of bounds and made a play on the ball. We'll review the play. So Jaguar is on that sideline and he steps out there now if he's if it's determined he's pushed he can come back in and catch the football and he does look like he's eased out that's fred bennett on the corner if he goes out on his own he's no longer eligible yeah i don't think there's any question he's pushed by fred bennett How about the touch from Rakeem Cato on that throw on the run? Pretty slick delivery. Not much question he stepped out. But was that enough of a push? Enhance the pitcher a little bit here for you. You can see both hands from Bennett on one on his waist, one up in the shoulder pad area, right foot on the white line, and then back in. And this taking longer than you might anticipate. So not clear cut in the view of the command center. After review, the receiver was pushed out of bounds and was eligible to come back in. Calgary will lose a timeout due to their lost challenge. So that great catch stands. The drive continues. And the Alouettes have a first and goal at the six. Well, I'm not sure what was better, the throw with the touch on it and two stampeders tracking him down or the catch where Shakira at the other end stabs it with the right arm and brings it down. I got a feeling Dunnigan jumped out of his seat with the throw and Stiegel <laughs> jumped even higher after the catch. What are you saying? Stiegel has a better vertical? And Schultz, he liked the blocking up front. Lewis trying to break it down. Oh, that's vintage Nick. <laughs> he's running through everything. I think he's telling his old teammates he's a Montreal Alouette now. Pushes the flat. Kata puts it on him. Brandon Smith comes up, puts his shoulder pads right in that thigh area, but that's like hitting tree trunks. Didn't wrap him up. And Big Nick Lewis puts the hand down. Allowed to do that. Not down by contact. Touchdown. Brandon Smith was the leading tackler with the Stampeders last year, but he's never had to tackle number eight. And the Alouettes are going to go for two here. The old form chart. He's kind of thrown out the no, window yeah. with the 32-yarder, but I'm a little surprised. There's some mathematician's got to rewrite that chart now. And Sutton's going to no, get sir. stopped. Freddie Bishop shuts the door. And it will be a 16-0 lead for the Alouettes. 
Two-point attempt here. Let's take a look defensively who steps up. Inside rush there. Bishop there, Quinn Smith, Freddie Bishop has I think it was Bishop. 15 yeah, family inside. and friends here from the Detroit area. But a touchdown for Nick Lewis. His first is a hey, much more killer. Away. I hope your arm gets better. I miss you out there. Hope you get better. You take a look at this touchdown. Take a look at this touchdown. Nick Lewis does two things. First thing he does right here is he comes down and he's going to look like he's going to block, and that slows the pass rush from the outside because if Nick Lewis is going to block you, you're paying attention. So he slows down that rush a little bit, then shoots the flat here. Then he catches it, little play-action fake from Rakeem Cato. Spins out of that, drops it right to Nick Lewis, and he does the rest, breaking that tackle by Brandon Smith. 189 games as an... Calgary Stampeder and in his second is an Alouette. Into the end zone. Tim Brown fields it to yard deep. And Brown with a feisty return across the 30. And with 153 left, a, an important drive for the Stampeders to get back into this game. It really is. I mean, they and I think a lot of people across the country are a little shocked right now. And you look at the champions winning game one and then coming to a team and playing in Montreal where Rakeem Cato starting in his very first game. Don't know what the final result, but that new pick. Yeah, he, pick him, pick him. 96% earlier in the week had selected Calgary in this game. Stan Peters are going to have to come back to keep those folks happy tonight. And a pass in the flat, skip short of Eric Rogers. And Bo Levi Mitchell now five for 12 and 70 yards in this first half. You know the you know the real the real difference. And again, the Hamilton Tiger Cats defensively played a good game against Bo Levi Mitchell last week, but success on first down. Calgary's just struggling on first down. Montreal's averaging eight yards on first down in this first half. Second and ten. Five receivers in. Porter stays in. Pass to McDaniel is complete. And it's a first down dragged down by Chip Cox. I was really interested to see how Chip Cox, who's a veteran and, and all-star player, former defensive player of the year, was going to adapt to the new rules because part of his game for so long has been to be physical on receivers. Can't do it anymore after five yards. 13 for McDaniel. First down, Mitchell had his time. Misses McDaniel here, but a flag flies as the matchup continues. The veteran Chip Cox against Markway McDaniel. That was in the back end. I think this is going to be against Cox. A little double move there. Pass interference, Montreal number 11. First down. Pass interference ruled at the Alouette 54. Yeah, it became pass interference because the ball is thrown to that receiver. Can't impede the receiver after five yards. He's after five yards, and the arm, the left arm, pushes him outside wide. And the first down is the Stampeders. Throw that. Flanker screen to has another catch and another Calgary first down. So this is the best looking march of the night when the Stampeders really need it. Absolutely. Into the hurry up, but need to get one of those footballs off the field. Please reset the game clock to 135. 135. Put 14 seconds back on the clock. Gave John Bowman a chance to get back into the game. He was on the sideline in the, in the D-line rotation for Montreal. So as they reset, Noel Thorpe gets his star rush in back in the game. I'm not sure John Hupnagel 
likes that substitution if they're going hurry up. Reset the game clock. Yeah, and they're not supposed to be able to do that, are they? No, and they had them on their heels a little bit. I think another ball got thrown out onto the field. They had to get it all reset. Well, they were resetting it. The clock continued to roll, so they had to reset the clock. But Bo Levi Mitchell had a little something going there with a couple completions in a row. Stamps trying to close the gap late in this first half. And they come. And it's Cornish dropped. And John Cornish steamrolls down to the 28. And this Calgary offense starting to click into gear. Came on a bit of a linebacker blitz here, Montreal did, but really a run blitz, and Cornish found the only gap. There's a blitzer here and a blitzer there, Bear Woods. And as they come through, you can see that little shuffle step inside opens it up. Nice block by number two. First down, swung out incomplete. Out of the reach of McDaniel. Mitchell rushed that throw. He, he had some pressure coming from Gerald Brown, the halfback. No Thorpe dialing up a couple of blitzes here down when they get backed up into their own end a little bit here. And because of that pressure, Mitchell just rushed it, didn't really even have a grip on it, and he threw it right into the, into the dirt. Stamps have not been shut out in the first half of a game since late September 2010. Second and ten. Three receivers near side. Taking a shot deep. And Eric Rogers can't bring it in. Had a step. But the throw was step too long. Oh. There he goes. You're right. He did have a step. Gerald Brown playing way off him and then had to turn and now's in trouble. Eric Rogers a good yard and a half in behind him and Bo just misses him over the outside shoulder. Well, here's the week one hero, the 50 yarder on the last play of the game. And this one is up, missed. And Logan's gonna bring it to the goal line and the Stamps still haven't hit the board. So Rene Paredes who had that emotional kick last week that looked like his season was off on a better foot. Misses one he should have made, and it remains 16 nothing, And that's a deflator for the Stamps. Yeah, it really is. And remember last year, this 15-win football team won lo or lost one game on the road. And that was right here in Montreal. Bo Levi Mitchell did not play in that game. That was Drew Tate's game. But it was one of the games in the in the back half of the season that that got Montreal going. They finished strong at nine and nine after a one and seven start. Deron Carter there. John Huffnagel is 41 and 22 on the road, and yet in Montreal he's three and four. Although he did win the Great Cup game here in Montreal in 2008. Here's second good run to get him out of. The shadows of their goalpost, Buddy Jackson brings him down, but not before a first down run to the 21, and Alouettes should be able to run out the clock now. Yeah, and, and I think there's going to be a, 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 the defense in the, in the locker room at halftime is going to talk about a little bit of intensity and, and bring it up a notch, and, and Jawan Simpson not being in the middle of that defense makes a big difference. I mean, that's their inspirational leader, their heart and soul guy. Rich Stuber has got to get him fired up, let a fire into this defense. Jawan Simpson out after 54 consecutive starts. Heartbeat of that defense. Glenn Love, uh, sorry, Chris, Glenn, Glenn Love is a good player and a good athlete, and he's replacing Simpson. But it's Jawan Simpson that when he feels a little bit of a drop off, he'll step up and, and say what need, needs to be said. And, and I'm not sure Glenn Love is going to do all of that. Now, Keon Raymond is, is also one of the leaders on that defense, and I wouldn't be surprised at all to see Raymond go in there at halftime and just say, hey, guys, we're better than this. Charleston Hughes was a beast last week, and he usually is. Quiet first half for him and a lot of members of that stamp defense. There's Sutton on the spin. Up near the 30-yard line, he'll be 
short of the first down. I, I talked to Keon Raymond before the game a little bit, and he, you know, I asked him, what are you going to do with Rakeem Cato? Are you going to send the house and see if he can handle it? He said, you know, we don't have a lot of film. We don't have any film on, on Cato, really, except for a few throws in the preseason. So we'll probably make most of our adjustments at halftime. He said, we're going to come in the start of the game and play our stuff do our defense and then at halftime regroup see what they've done in the first half and make the adjustments then so let's see what they come up with in the second half welcome back to montreal 16 nothing alouettes as we get set for the second half but first john lou with markway mcdaniel markway during that final drive of the first half you got some traction with your offense what was working where it hadn't been in the previous quarter plus. Uh, we just settled down, made some plays. That's all we have to do. Uh, we're close, but we're not good enough. So now we just got to settle down, no more mistakes, and just got to make plays. Through the first three halves of this young season, are you finding that opponents really are gunning for the reigning champions? Um, of course, but uh, that's like that every year. So uh, we just got to play our game. That's what we're not doing right now. So we just got to settle down, like I said, not make mistakes and make plays. Thanks for this, Mark Wayne. No problem. Came back last week against the Thai Cats. Won on the final play of the game. A little bit steeper climb here tonight. Yeah, I don't see a, a ton of pressure on Bo Levi Mitchell just yet. He's been hit a few times, but really the difference in that first half was success on first down. Kim Cato got that offense going. Opening drive, 95 yards, nine plays, and a touchdown. And what does Rich Stubler cook up? At halftime, here's Logan. On the return, he might have something, gets outside. And away he goes, stepping out just beyond the 45. Looked like he might have a little bit more. William Langley, rookie in the Calgary lineup, pushed him out. Boy, look good in that opening drive. Of course, most of the time, especially for young quarterbacks, opening drives are scripted, so... Give some credit to Turk Schoenert, Ryan Dinwiddie, and Anthony Calvillo putting together a game plan that allowed him to make the quick read, get the ball out there, but stalled as the as the game was going on and then had another good drive with some field position set up by Stefan Logan on a return. Hitch to Green, who breaks a tackle as the Stamps try to rip it out. To S.J. Green falls forward to the 53-yard line, and as close to eight. But that's a great question that, that you had, Chris, which is what does Rich Stubler do now? Now now that he's got a half a football to study and break down there at halftime, does he does he bring more pressure and see if he can fluster young Rakeem Cato? Or does he drop back and make him be patient all the way? He's been patient in the first half and looked pretty successful 13 to 16. Rich Stubler's been doing this since before Cato was born. <laughs> Second and two, and Sutton lost the football. And it's gobbled back up, or is it? It's a Calgary football. See if they ruled forward progress. As Sutton was close to the first down at near midfield. Boy, he hits a wall. And they're ruling it's Montreal ball and then Sutton was down. He was down by contact before the ball came out. Josh Bell came over the top as he was spinning out of that one. And he has been the key for Montreal. I mean, a big difference maker for a young quarterback to have that balance and, and be able to run. Third and inches and Brandon Bridge in on the short yardage following Luke Bordeaux Jordan. Got across midfield. That was forward progress. And he got pushed back, and they're going to rule this it is, is a first down. But this is interesting. If the play was allowed to continue, he might have been dropped for a loss. Yeah, they're ruling that he got pushed back. And if he got pushed back, then yeah, it would be forward progress, which is where they spotted the football, which I think is it is first down territory. My question is, I thought he might have tried to back up and restart that on his own. And if he bumps that outside, now he gets tackled for a loss. Advance, or? No, yeah, it's not forward. If he if he comes out on his own and then gets tackled behind the line of scrimmage, it's a loss. Remains Montreal ball. And Here's Sutton straight ahead for five more. Yeah. 
And yeah. Sutton a little slow to get up at the end of the play. 13 carries, 84 yards. So far for the man with the Twitter handle, all of a Sutton. Second and close to six. Quick hitter, complete. And another first down. First catch of the game for Cody Hoffman out of BYU. Newcomer to the lineup, tutored the last couple of years by a, a coach yeah. at Brigham Young by the name of Cahoon. Ever heard of him? <laughs> just, just a little bit, especially in these parts. Ben Cahoon, the all-time leading receiver. Montreal and coached up Cody Hoffman. Guy they compared a little bit to the same style of player of Brandon London, who recently retired. And off to the right side. And keeps churning up the yards, doesn't he? Terrell Sutton off the right side. And seven more. Closing in on a 100-yard night. Boy, boy, that old line just continues to slide across, pick up the blocks here. They're just going to go in this direction and, and allow Terrell Sutton to just find his hole. Look at him just kind of pave the way there. Again, first down production for the Montreal Alouettes is helping Rakeem Cato in a big, big way. Puts him in manageable situations. Look at the difference between Montreal and Calgary. Sutton again. And he won't get to the first down stick, Brandon. Or check that uh, Buddy Jackson steps up to prevent the first down. Now, one of the games we did in week one was at Fort McMurray with the Toronto Argonauts against the Edmonton Eskimos. And Brandon Whitaker had a big game. And at the time, thinking, you know, wondering if Montreal's regretting the decision with Brandon Whitaker. But when you see Terrell Sutton play the way he's playing, that's why they can make that decision. Looks like he switched his jersey, but Philip Blake, the right guard, now wearing number 60s, had a, a good night. And Tom Higgins told us that he has exceeded expectations. Brandon Bridge sneaking for the first down. Well, if Rakeem Cato can finish this drive with a major, this is going to be the upset of the year it's early I know but man I was anyone you what did you say 96 percent in the pick of defending champions coming into Montreal with a quarterback in his first start Green six minutes off the clock here in the third quarter and into scoring position to Sutton and they reverse it coming around is SJ Green and he is brought down at the 25 so five on a play that looked like it might produce a little bit more yeah let me show you six foot 178 what you do is you, you, you this is this is Cato watch out okay there's the handoff now the pitch now to the left of your screen he's gonna set up to make a block and then at the last second jump right out of the way <laughs> Tenth play of the drive. We we're trying to think of a quarterback the more diminutive than him, and, and you made the point when Damon Allen broke in, he was 160 pounds. Another catch by Shagir, who's been a popular target tonight. I, I just a couple things that have been impressive from Cato. One, one is his how quickly he's making the decisions. He's not confused by different looks from this Calgary defense. Not phased by the pressure, although he didn't have any on that play. But his delivery quick and to the point accuracy has been bang on. His ball placement is there. He either has got... First and ten. <laughs> Once again, brought down by Freddie Bishop. We're talking about his size. As a freshman, he checked in at 147 pounds and, <laughs> and, and started right in his freshman year. And what was his bench press? It was uh, a Cuthbert-like 65 pounds. 
<laughs> I don't know. Can you do 65? I've seen you in the gym. But 65-pound bench is not impressing too many people. He's just getting it done. I mean, 15,000 yards passing or just shy of it at Marshall as we set off the top. This is a impressive drive after Calgary was able to make adjustments at halftime. Eating up half of the quarter. It's Look at this, Reed. Blitz pickup. Knows he's got an unblocked man coming off the edge. He's got to get the ball away before that. The adjuster is Cody Hoffman. Ball placement on the money. Does he just not know any better? Who does he think he is? <laughs> Trevor Harris? <laughs> 12 play drive, 65 yards. They eat up 745. And BD hits the upright. So they missed a two point try, and now he's missed one, and they'll lead 22 0. Just over seven minutes left, third quarter, and Calgary's finally going to get the ball. More awesome than ever. The bite begins Sunday at 8 Eastern only on Discovery. You go in the cage, the cage goes in the water, sharks in the water. Now there's some people in Montreal saying that Cody Hoffman looks a little bit like our panel guy, ah, Jock Climbing. Yeah. Tim Brown trying to kick it for the sticks. And he'll get tossed down by the newcomer, Nick Shortle. Out of McMaster. Congratulations on the Montreal sidelines for the kid quarterback. Hey, Cody Hoffman here. He's going to run on Keon Raymond, run this slant, and the adjuster on the blitz right to the middle for Rakeem Cato. But Cato knows he's got the safety coming off the edge, is unblocked. That's going to be Josh Bell right here. Protection is good up front, but Bell's the free man, so Cato's got to get rid of the ball before 11 gets. second level and a first down run for John Cornish up to the 43 yard line he has a dozen take a look another look at that at that run and don't want to abandon John Cornish even though you Calgary offense got to play with a little more sense of urgency get in and out of the huddle now 10 carries 59 yards stays in the block over the middle pass caught by West and tripped up at the 46. Winston Venable there defensively. You mentioned off the top last week, Calgary did not have the lead until the end of the game against Hamilton. Here's a different take. They've had a share of the lead in the West for the past 30 weeks. Second down, Mitchell's got Joe West into Montreal territory and a first down for Calgary at the Alouette 45. Yeah, there's, and there's lots of football to be played. And my point was that don't rule yes. the champions out of this game. Dave Dickinson sending in the plays, but uh, there is an injury. An Alouette down, so we will step out with 5.36 left here in quarter number three. Calgary needs to find an answer after this 12-play drive. 65 yards, chewed up seven minutes and 57 seconds. Nice balance between pass and run. And after the adjustments made at halftime by Rich Stubler and this Calgary defense, Rakeem Cato in his first start going to work. Was the injured Alouette, the middle linebacker, so that puts Nick Schwartle, rookie out of McMaster, into the fray. First and ten, they'll swing it out. McDaniel outside, cuts back and brought down at the 40 yard line. 
but there is Shortle, a four-year starter with the Marauders out of Nobleton, Ontario, the number 13 pick in this year's draft. Decided to get a little bit of playing time, and Shortle looked a little high running around there. He's got to lower that pad level a little bit, especially when number nine's coming through the line. Second and six. Now let's send extra man and open is McDaniel. And he is upended. Or Joe West, excuse me, Mark Olivier Bouillette with the tackle. 20 yards for West. Right on the break. Joe West on that slant route and Bo Levi Mitchell puts it on him. You see corner on the outside. Trips up. Mitchell White. 20 for West on the first down at the 20. Oh, was that Hefney? That was Hefney. Here's Mitchell looking into the end zone and McDaniel can't reach it. Looks like he had a step in that continuing battle of veterans against Chip Cox. They're be working on Chip Cox a little bit tonight. And there is a flag on the play. After the play, objectional conduct, Calgary number 28. 10-yard penalty, suck it down. That's another bench penalty for the Stampeders, like one last week that nearly cost them the game. Brandon Smith called on the sidelines. Veteran gets the call. Moves it back to the 30, and now second and 20. Alex showing pressure once again. Here they come. <laughs> Mitchell underneath got it away. And Eric Rogers, the catch, dropped the ball. Was he down? Whistle had sounded as Rogers shaken up at the 21. Well, they get up from that pile. I was a little surprised on second and 20. Noel Thorpe went with the pressure he did. Basically kind of umbrella covered behind it. Played his defensive secondary off and gave a lot of room to the receivers. Obviously, he wants them to catch it underneath and then come up and rally and make the tackle. But if you're blitzing, that leaves a lot of room for open field running for a receiver. Often in second and long like that, you'll see defensive coordinators go to three-man pressure, drop everybody, make them throw it underneath, and then rally to the tackle. You got a lot of people to tackle in that case. Paredes on the field. Looks like the Stamps will go for three, 18 and a half minutes to go. Third and 10, you're taking the points? Oh yeah, oh yeah. A lot can happen in a quarter. And Rogers continues to get attention after his second catch of the night. Now let's take a look what happened to Eric Rogers here. Safety, Mark Olivier Bruyette came over the top. Darren Kitchens looked like he's Part of that too, but it, it yeah. is Bruette that makes the, the contact. So if you joined us late, Jeff Fuller, a, a late scratch today. And now Rogers getting attention at the bench. Paradez missed late in the first half from 28 yards out. Down the middle this time, and the Stampeders are on the board with just over three minutes left. In the third quarter, it's a 19-point lead for the Alouettes, being led by an impressive rookie debut from Rakeem Cato. Check in with John Lou. Yeah, it's still far from uh, about a 12, yeah, more than a quarter than when we get into that three minute warning, Chris. But uh, last week, heading into the final possession that led to game winning drive, Bo Levi Mitchell said to his offensive line, We're going to drive, we're going to score, we're going to win. He then went out and engineered the touchdown drive, that, or excuse me, the, the, uh, the, the, the drive that led to Rennie Paradis' game winning field goal. And he says that he now goes into situations like that with the confidence of feeling that he can pull that off every single time. And when TSN asked him, 
when did you first develop that feeling? He said went back to about second or third game of last season when he first started feeling the two-way trust and confidence between quarterback and offense that he could do that. And since that time, his record and the stances has been 14-2 and two when Bo Levi Mitchell has taken the ball. Guys? Let's see. He looks anxious to get back out, but... Not only did Keto engineer a touchdown drive on his first possession of the third quarter, but took almost eight minutes off the clock. Well, if the Calgary Stampeders are going to get the ball back to Bo Levi Mitchell, Keon Raymond may just be the guy to do that. Last week, another interception for a touchdown. That means in the last four years and a game, he's had five picks for touchdowns, and not in cleanup time or anything like that. We're talking about when the game's on the line, Keon Raymond makes the big play. His wife said that they did some numbers. His average touchdown return yards, 88. He's taking it to the house the distance of the field. Second down, Cato rolling right, pressure on. A couple of moves, and he gets close to the first down. Looks like he's going to be a yard short. Eight of his 16 completions tonight have been second down conversions. I think that's the first time we've seen him run, and we've got a Stampeder down on the field. Get outside. Nice cut back right there. That's Jasper Simmons for the Calgary Stampeders, former Ottawa Red Black. He just cut back and got right to the first down marker. And I was wondering if it was Charleston Hughes, and it is. Veteran defensive end. So with third and short upcoming, Stamps are going to lose the anchor of that defensive line for this next play. Well, and let's give some credit up front to the to the 5 0 lineman for, for Montreal. They got a young quarterback behind them. They've opened up some holes for Terrell Sutton on first down to give him a chance in second and medium to second and short to keep the ball rolling. And we haven't talked at all about 39, and, and that just never happens. It was one of the big stories last week. Let's take a look and see how. He just looked like from the get-go, yep. he either cramped up in that calf or maybe full, felt a pulled muscle of some kind. So third and short, Dan, off the left side. Bridge has it and leans forward for a little bit more. talk you know and, and Tom Higgins said that they'd see both unless one of them got hot well Rakeem Cato is about as hot as a first-year quarterback in his first start can be and when we talked to Brandon yesterday we weren't sure if he was the starter and he said I'm not nervous at all not that yep. kind of guy never nervous in a game I don't think Rakeem Cato is very nervous either <laughs> he's hiding it well if he is first down short drop First read not available, and that's incomplete. That was close to Josh Bell, the safety, who was in coverage against Jaguar. I think Bell was surprised the ball was there. One of the one of the few times in this game tonight that Cato will be in second and long. And is this a chance for the Calgary Stampeders defensively to send some pressure? Remember, when they tried it back up against their own, in their own end, he threw it past the pressure for a touchdown to Cody Hoffman. And again, eight second down conversion completion so far. He throws over the middle, threats the needle, make it nine. S.J. Green, a first down at the Calgary 50. Keon Raymond can't believe it. He can't believe that he got it in there. And you got to give credit here to S.J. Green for strong hand and fighting off the pressure contested catch right there a little bit behind him and I think Cato threw it there knowing Keon Raymond was breaking downhill and had a crack at it. Now 17 of 22 and at 199 yards and three touchdown passes on the night. Six catch for S.J. Green. Back to the near side and Sutton 
tumbles down at the 46. Tackle on the play made by DeQuinn Evans. So one more play, barring penalty, here in the third quarter. And Turk Schoenert's offense have kept the Stampeders off the field here in the third quarter. That's huge. It's the best way to play defense yeah. against the Stamps, isn't it? Keep, keep Mitchell and that receiving core and John Cornish right over there on their own bench. John Corners trying to stay warm. Second down, handed off to Sutton, and he'll be stopped short. Got to the 42. He's two yards away from a first down. Final play, third quarter. And we'll find out if Montreal will attempt a field goal to start the fourth. Right now, they own a 19-point lead. Three touchdown passes for Rakeem Cato through three quarters. Championship banners of Percival Molson, including the 2009 and 2010 Grey Cup banners. And the head coach of those teams, Mark Trestman, has joined us. What a pleasure to have you here tonight. And uh, this is an interesting night for the Montreal Alouettes. Uh, your thoughts right away on Rakeem Cato. Yeah, he's, uh, he's come out. He's been accurate. He's shown a lot of poise uh, under fire. Uh, they've blitzed him. He's uh, been able to pick up the blitz with, uh, with a nice throw for a touchdown on this last, last touchdown he had. So it's a lot of good stuff going on here to spark the team. Mark, I want to ask you about your experience and, and now good job with Baltimore. I know it didn't work out in Chicago the way you wanted, but tell us a little bit about that experience. Uh, Chicago-wise? Yeah. Um, it was a great experience. You know, things don't always work out the way you want them to. We did the best we could, and uh, we're very grateful and appreciative of landed on our feet in, uh, in Baltimore. You must love the memories you have when you come back to this city. I know you're enjoying it as a, a bit of a tourist now. Absolutely. My wife and I have come back the last few years. So I've tried to enjoy a lot of this city that we didn't get a chance to see when we were working. <laughs> so uh, uh, we're, we're enjoying it. The people are great. It's, it feels like home here. It always has. And uh, we're enjoying the week. Long-range field goal by Boris. Beattie enhancing the Montreal lead and we we're wondering about who who takes the reins from Anthony Calvillo. You were you were spoiled in a sense with uh, with a, a legendary <laughs> CFL quarterback. Uh, what do you look for when you're looking for the next guy? Oh, that's a tough one. That's that's a question for Jim Pop because he's the best at it. Uh, but but this young man, you know, it just uh, he's shown great poise tonight under fire. Uh, they blitzed him. He's handled the blitz well. The team is playing hard for him. Uh, he's playing under control. He's throwing the ball away. But you know, no scores. Uh, you know, 22 to three isn't enough in the fourth quarter in the CFL. So we got a long way to go. We've asked you many many times, but I want to get it again. Calvillo and where you place him in all the quarterbacks, the great players that you've played with. Oh, Anthony's as good as anybody I've ever coached uh, from the standpoint that we go, the standpoint of uh, preparation and uh, attention to detail and accuracy and poise and leadership. And, you know, he's the reason that uh, I was able to uh, I have such a great experience in Montreal. It started with him. How do you think he'll do as a coach? I think he's going to be a great coach. I think he's uh, had coffee with him this morning. He likes it. Um, he's trying to learn it from the ground floor up. But uh, the sky's going to be the limit for AC. I think we're going to see a lot of him as a, as a coach in this week. So that pick up for Markway McDaniel will stand. Don't know how much you know about Levi Mitchell, but since you left, he's kind of taken the league by storm. Oh, he's done a great job. And, uh, and uh, you know, uh, John and his staff have done a great job with him. They've got a great offensive scheme. And uh, Dickinson has done a great job over the years uh, uh, running that scheme. So uh, they're in good hands, certainly. And not out of this game, a 63-yard no, play for Bo Levi Mitchell. Yep. Take a look at what they do here on first and 10 from the 12. Out of the backfield, Tim Brown incomplete with a flag down. Talk to Nick Lewis, Mark, just before the game, and one of the great receivers in the league for so many years. And, and I asked him about Rakeem Cato being in his first start. He said, he said, you know, there's some about guys who just win. Bo Levi Mitchell won at every level, high school. Montreal number 55, five-yard penalty. 
the first down. Captain offside. In college, and, and so did and so did Cato. Something just about that, you can't measure it, but it's there. No, there's uh, the, the it factor is really, you know, the key ingredients to being a great quarterback. You don't know really, you can't really touch it or feel it, but, you know, the guys, these guys have the ability to make plays when the time is of the essence, and, uh, and they've got to be great, and uh, this is one young man who's done that. Put you on the spot. Would we ever see you as a head coach in the Canadian Football League again? You know, I've, I've never d gone any farther than the moment. You guys know that. I mean, I'm just trying to be the best coach I can be. And uh, for John Harbaugh and his staff, I'm very grateful and appreciative to be a Baltimore Raven right now and uh, going to do everything I can to help the organization. At the end of the day, Mark, it's just great to be around this game, isn't it? That's, uh, that's all it is, is that every day is a blessing to be in the, in the game of football. And it doesn't matter whether it's north of the border where it's as good a game as I've ever been around to uh, to our end today. Good hard run by Cornish, and then gets stacked up. You made the Canadian Football League better, and we yeah. appreciate uh, what you did here and uh, for joining us tonight. Well, I'm, I appreciate that. I'm, I'm thankful to Anthony Calvillo for allowing me to, to uh, uh, be the head coach for as long as I was here and, uh, and have the collective success we had for the, for the uh, Alouettes in the city of Montreal. Great to have you here, okay, Mark. Okay, guys, and my nice pleasure. to see you again. And my Thank pleasure. You. Thanks, Mark. All the best, Thank guys. You. Okay, have a great season. What a treat that is. And now Calgary trying to cap this drive. Close the gap. Second down, flags fly, and this play doesn't get off. Legal procedure, Calgary number 60. Five-yard penalty, still second down. Left guard Shane Bergman, who started last week, didn't finish. Jumped prematurely, and you're wondering, the crowd here at Percival. The officials are talking to Calgary, giving them the options. Well, they're still huddled up. Biggest call of the game right here. Might be a new DB in town, 91. <laughs> at, at, at just a 292. <laughs> I don't know about his backpedal. I don't think the I don't think backpedal is in his vocabulary. That's a defensive tackle. They go forward. Long time to sort this out. Well, one call against Montreal, but it looks like there might be more. Yeah, they, it, it has to be. They, they've been huddled there for, for some time, and that's one thing I've noticed out of the gate. Here we go. Pass interference, Montreal number 39. Half, half the distance to the goal. First down. Well, it is one. just the one call, and it is oh, the veteran Gerald Brown. Tom Higgins doesn't like it. There's, there's Gerald Brown. And he's, he's not allowing from behind. And he wants the intended target out of release. So first and goal. Another flag thrown. And a Where's challenge it? flag. Now, is he arguing McDaniel behind the line of scrimmage? Might, would that change the call? Well, no, I, I, the, the challenge, you can't challenge a penalty 
Oh, you can you challenge, can challenge that it's not PI. You can challenge defensive pass interference, and they could be taking another look at that. As simple as that. But I don't think there's any doubt. Confirm the challenge has gone through yet, but well, here Jim Croker will sort it out. They're challenging, that is not, they're challenging against defensive pass interference on the last play. The play will be reviewed. Yes, they're going to challenge that it wasn't defensive pass interference. It's going to be interesting because it did take a long time for this call to be made, and now they'll take even longer to sort it out. McDaniel behind the line of scrimmage. to challenge this. I mean, Mark Wade McDaniel was the intended receiver. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. First down. Doesn't matter that he's behind the line of scrimmage. At the end of the day, Mark Wade McDaniel is the intended target, and, and Gerald Brown impeded his, his ability to get to his route from behind and grabbed him. It, it has nothing to do with the illegal contact in that five-yard zone because he's the intended target. The ball's thrown to him, so it's pass interference beating him to the football. And the quickest guy to make the call was Mitchell, who was signaling for it immediately. First and goal. Handoff. Corners. Big collision. And Venable keeps him out. Well, that was a rock and a hard place there. He steps up into this hole. And here comes John Cornish. And something's got to give here. sliding into the middle now in the absence of Bear Woods. Lower that pad level. So second goal from the one. Andrew Tate plunging. Any signal? Last week he was stopped. It was an issue last week. Twice. Once on the goal line and once on a another third and one unsuccessful gamble and they're saying no didn't get there and it is going to be third and one that's three times now in the last two games Used to be automatic. Tate had 10 touchdowns last year. Most of them on the quarterback sneaks. Number four, number nine. Looking for six. It's Cornish. Outside the flags. Touchdown. See what the penalty is, but they took it right off the line. They put Drew Tate in the shotgun with corners behind him. It's like the signal against Montreal. Took the ball five yards off the line of scrimmage. Offside, offside. Montreal number 55. Finally has declined. Napton offside and John Cornish into the end zone for a Stampeder touchdown. Take the ball five yards off the that one yard line now it's six yards away and Cornish makes that nice first cut to his left and finds the soft spot, finds the bubble. Stamps now going for two, trying to get within 14 points. Will the missed two-point convert and the missed convert come back to haunt Montreal tonight? Mitchell, incomplete, flag flies. This time it'll be Billy Parker and more than one flag. One in the offensive backfield as well. Daniel threw his hands up like he was being held. Billy Parker was in coverage. He tried to run an out. McDaniel's been tough to cover tonight. Drawn a couple of flags. 
It's like offsetting here. One indication was a penalty against Pass interference, Calgary. Montreal number 17. Objection of conduct, Calgary number 19. Wow. We'll retry the convert. So, objectionable conduct from Mitchell. Uh, well, here, here's here's the hold. And we saw so this. What, yeah, that's the PI. We saw this last night. You you can't make the call. No. For the official. No. So they'll redo it from the three for two. Look here. So Same no. play, and it's two points with another flag in the end zone. And it's going against Montreal, so the two points will stand for Marquay McDaniel on his sixth catch of the night. Six catches over 100 yards and has drawn two key penalty flags late Legal in this game. On a receiver, Montreal number 17. Plenty of decline. Two point convert is good. And many of those penalties against Montreal have been trying to corral Markway McDaniel. Cornish with the touchdown and McDaniel punctuates it with the two point convert and it's a 14 point Alouette lead. Right in Winnipeg. Couple sacks for the Alouettes tonight. Calgary without Mike. one this evening. Mike. Mike. First touchdown of the year for John Cornish. So just under 10 minutes to go, and the plot thickens. Paradis squips it downfield. A favorable bounce to Logan. And Logan dropped at the 28-yard line. Well, he's been spectacular tonight. Let's see what kind of closer Rakeem Cato is. He's trying to see also if Charleston Hughes is back on the field. I don't think he is. In fact, it's Looks like they're going to go with three linemen here, and it's like oh, DeQuinn Evans will take the spot of Charleston Hughes. Take the Sutton on a roll. Evans was in pursuit, and the pass is. Let's see, Hoffman does he have it? Calgary defenders waving it incomplete, and it is. A little bit low, but I, you know, I think this throw from Rakeem Cato was was so where it wasn't a dangerous throw. And he got his hands underneath. I'm not sure if the tip of that ball though touched the turf in behind his hands. Tough to tell from that angle. Ruling on the field is incomplete. It's no challenge. So second and ten. a dart to the short side of the field on a little curl road right at the two yards past the first down marker and the timing is unbelievable on the throw as is the accuracy Rakeem Cato right on the three third catch of the game for Popman who has his first CFL touchdown to the ground, back to Sutton, 100 yard rusher on the night to midfield and four more as the clock rolls. Yeah, this, this offense has leaned on number 20 big time tonight. They've had to. Young quarterback, get your running back involved in protections and running the ball, getting first down success, 108 yards rushing. Sutton might have noticed what Brandon Whitaker did for Toronto last week. He's replacing Whitaker. The, Veteran at Alouette running back who was let loose and Sutton showing us why the Alouettes were so high on the next guy. Cato complete for its stamps, close to a first down and a flag as Jasper Simmons took stamps out. And if that 
catch stands. It's the 500th of Fred Stamps' nine-year career. Offensive pass interference, Montreal number 19. Ten yard penalty, second down. SJ Green looks skyward. Offensive pass interference. Let's take a look here. He, he starts out as that two receiver and then gets onto the outside. Blocking. Be So second and 16. Cato steps up. And he hooks slides at the 50. Back to the original line of scrimmage, and it will now, be third down. Now, he's made some great plays tonight in his very first start. That might have been one of the best ones. And it didn't pr pr produce a touchdown or a first down. It was a good decision on second and real long. Pulled it down, didn't like what he saw, didn't force it, caused a turnover. All kinds of momentum for Calgary. He's going to put his punt team out there, give his defense a chance. Great decision there to run. Not always a bad thing to punt, as the coaches will tell you. Biddy to punt it away. Throws that. Great kick. And out at the 10 yard line. One boot, 52 with one on the return. Long field for Bo Levi Mitchell, but the stamp still in this one. Point while we're off here. In a year when we've already lost Darian Durant, Mike Riley's hurt, Crompton, and threw Willie hurt last night. Great to see some fresh blooded quarterback come in and be this impressive. Well, Bo Levi Mitch has got a long way to go. I'm wondering what Montreal right now is going to do with Mark Wade McDaniel. Are they going to try and double team him, roll the coverage to him, maybe play some zones in behind it and have someone get up and try and jam him? He's been tough to cover all night, or at least in this second half. First catch for Anthony Parker. He gets nine. It's second and one. And Mitchell steps up and he'll get the first down. Well, with Dave Dickinson calling plays and Bo, Mid Bo Levi Mitchell out there, there is time to score twice. Oh, plenty of time. Plenty of time. But 90 yards away from where they need to be. Long out. And quick close there by Mitch White. We've seen three touchdowns scored inside the three-minute warning. But if Montreal tackles like that, they should be fine. This is Mark Wayne McDaniel time right now. He's to the wide field. Calgary needs a second down conversion. Pressure coming. He gets it away. And the pass is caught again. It's Anthony Parker. Looks like he stepped out a yard short of the first down, maybe even more than a yard as they spot it back at the 28. So it's third and three. Yeah, and keep in mind, last week, two short yardage situations. Drew Tate didn't get there. One goal line stand on second down down here. Now they, they scored on third down with Cornish. They got a goal, but the question is, what's the play call? Go to Cornish. Do they have to go? Wouldn't you say five and a half? Still a lot of time? Interesting gamble. Third and three. He's trying to change the play. Mitchell stands in, throws, man open. Incomplete. Parker can't make the catch. And it's a turnover on downs. The first turnover of the night. Parker was open, little zip on the ball for Mitchell. Here's Parker on the corner. And he does break open. Jam inside of five yards is, is legal. 
Ball over the outside shoulder. So the ball turned over by the Stamps. Just inside the... Your point will be debated. Your point will do, be debate, debated this week, depending on what happens here. Did they have to go there? Here's Stamps, breaking through! And taken down a first down, and no flag, so that is catch number 500 for Fred Stamps. You don't make it there, the game is pretty much over. Montreal capitalizes on this field position with the major. Five minutes left, right on that bubble time. And not to go with Cornish. There'll be lots of discussion throughout the week. Fifth trip to the red zone for Montreal on the night. Three touchdowns so far. First and 10, Sutton. And Sutton plowing his way all the way down to the six. Here, here's a guy in his first start, Chris. I know this is a handoff, but, but watch, watch how excited he is right now. I, I think I know where you're going. <laughs> Cato is not only going to give Terrell Sutton the ball here, he's going to give him the ball and then a little pat on the back. There you go, man. Take it. A little pat on the backside. Take it and hit it up in there. Nice. And Sutton knows what to do with it. Six more for Terrell Sutton, 20th carry, 114 yards. Second and four. Jaguar motion, Sutton again. He'll be short. Stop just beyond the line of scrimmage. Junior Turner, the former Bishop product, and the safety Josh Bell there. And the field goal team will come out, try and make it a 17-point lead. And an injured Stampeder, it's Brandon Smith, all CFL defensive halfback. Brandon Smith last year finished third in the league in tackles. Doesn't happen very often with defensive back. That's linebacker territory, 85 of them. Looks like he's cramping up, maybe grabbing that calf or ankle. Not a particularly hot night here. No, no not Conditions at all. Conditions just about perfect. Yeah, beautiful night. It's one of those nights where you want to just walk down the hill after the game. And <laughs> you still got 314. <laughs> Hang in there. Of course, we'll be in Regina on Sunday. Argos will be the visitors against Kevin Glenn and the yeah. Saskatchewan Rough Riders. And a guy named McCallum will be kicking field goals for the Rough Riders. Apparently, Corey Chamberlain, as McCallum walked in the room, said, thought that some of the guys thought someone's dad just arrived. So McCallum kicks field goals, and Glenn's a quarterback, and, and I'm going to think it's 2005 all over again. <laughs> Looks like Brandon Smith will be okay. He's just walking it off. Great Cup champions pulled one out of the fire last week when it looked like the Tie Cats were going to win one at McMahon and. John Huffnagel needs an enormous comeback with not a whole lot of time on the clock to avoid the first loss of the year. It's been a bit of a rough start for the heavy favorites. Brandon Bridge, the holder, and they're gonna just chew up a little more time and walk back. Beatty wanted a little more room. Can go from his sand wedge back up and hit the pitching wedge or nine iron now. Alouettes will be in Winnipeg.
Time count violation, Montreal number one. Five yard penalty, still third down. So it will come back to the 17. A little confusion here as it's like the referee is calling the three minute warning here. Okay. We'll have to wait a little longer for the three attempt. 25 11, Montreal. From Moore's, every pick counts. Make yours today. And if you pick Montreal, you were in the minority and looking pretty good right now. I was going to mention Montreal next Friday in Winnipeg. The Stampeders don't play till the following Monday at home against the Argonauts. 17 yard field goal attempt is through. And it's 28 11, a three score game with Rakeem Cato and the Alouettes in the lead. The Nissan Titan player of the game brought to you by Nissan, official vehicle of the Canadian Football League. No question tonight. 79% of his passes completed. 19 of 24, 235, three touchdowns. In his very first start, wasn't on the roster last week. Rakeem Cato, congratulations. Crompton, what a debut. Lefevre, Marsh, unavailable. The number four and five guys on the depth chart. And Cato, three minutes away from providing the first win of the year. Mitchell on the roll, delivers high and incomplete. And against his former team, big Nick Lewis, three for 65 and a touchdown. He's looking forward to this one. There's a couple pretty good receivers right there, and Fred Stamps and Nick Lewis, a couple veterans. And, and I said before we started the game, Chris, I said, it'll be about three or four games before we start calling those guys old folks or just experienced and valuable to this team. They're experienced tonight, aren't they? Yep. Cornish took the little dump pass and Kitchens comes back to pull him down. No huddle as the Stamps have to be in a hurry now. Funny there are some stadiums where teams just have trouble winning and this is one for the Stampeders. Look at it. Pass caught but Immediately on the scene defensively with Jonathan Hefney. Bit of a comeback story, Jonathan Hefney. Stampeder in 2013 cut, did not play last year. Convinced Jim Pop to bring him out to a tryout camp, and he's back in the league. And a turnover on downs sends Montreal back onto the field. 14 career picks for Hefney. Well, the decision desk is just about ready. Another turnover by Calgary. Their second of the game. And they've come on the last two possessions. Both turnovers are downs. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to... Sutton's going to roll and flags fly as he's brought down. This penalty is going to push Montreal back a little bit, take that play away, but... Holy, Montreal number 62, 10-yard penalty, first down. First thing I'm going to do is go back and check out the Marshall website, see how excited that school is about the performance of Rakeem Cato, and I wonder, and Jonathan Crompton is due to come back in a couple of weeks, and he may just have some competition. Jake Piotrowski's in on that offensive line now, gets called. Tom Higgins saying Crompton is, is pretty close. And even before the injury, he was, he was just clinging to his starter's job against Lefebvre. 
There's another contender for the job now. And boy, did Terrell Sutton help his rookie quarterback out tonight. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. His first down production was outstanding. Solid in protections. In fact, you didn't see a lot of pressure on Rakeem Cato. We didn't talk much about Charleston Hughes. He left in this fourth quarter due to injury. Find an update on that. But Tom Higgins mentioned yesterday that Turk Schoner didn't get enough credit for the second half success of the Owls last year. And he's going to get a lot of credit for this. And look at Cato, a little sidearm sling. Charleston Hughes, our update is that he's got an ice pack on his left calf. So anyway, when you look at that Calgary D, we didn't talk about Hughes when he was in. Well blocked up front. Cato didn't have much pressure. In fact, throughout this entire game, one hit, three hurries on the Montreal quarterback. Third and five from the 40. And I think they sent the field goal unit in. Tom Higgins told us that Boris Beattie's got a huge leg. I mean, the reason Sean White was scratched the first two weeks of the season. A decision that raised eyebrows, and it's, it's the more conventional punt. I was going to say that a 17-point lead, you're probably punting in this situation, and they will. Timeout, Montreal. And they run the clock down, take the timeout. And 96 seconds left. Yeah, he was real impressed with the. Please reset the game clock to 138. 138. Just the live leg from Boris Beattie he said that, you know, with the new punt rules where that interior five have to stay at the line till the ball's kicked, hang time becomes that much more important and just felt like Boris Beattie just had that big leg. Now he's got to work on his consistency and he will be the answer to the tribute question when they change the rule. Who was the first one to miss the longer extra point? Watches that. And that will go to the back of the end zone. Tim Brown's going to dance and get taken down. So a single point makes it 29 11. Another flag comes down at the end of that play. 57 yard boot, and Drew Tate he is in to mop up for Calgary. Fifteen wins last year for Calgary. One the of the bigger foul, unnecessary roughness. Montreal number 56. 15 yard penalty. First down. One of their losses here in, in Montreal. So no 56 listed. This will be the first road defeat for Bo Levi Mitchell. Mm -hmm. A couple firsts in back to back weeks. First time he threw three interceptions in a game last week. First loss on the road for him this week. Tate over the middle, flag down, pass dropped. Anthony Parker can't hold on. <laughs> Mitchell's night done, 19 to 30. Receiver, Montreal number 10. 10 yard penalty, first down. Marc Olivier Bouillette. The latest penalty call. And that pushes the ball to the Allo at 50. There's the final line on Boldy by Mitchell. First down, Drew Tate. Time to throw. And a big hit delivered there by Hefty as Parker is targeted once again. Mm -hmm. 
veteran on the outside stepping into this hit. Now Matt Walter, he gets dragged down by Michael Klassen. Man, we're into the final minute. Fifteen and three last year did not lose their second game until a September visit to Montreal. Please reset the game clock to one minute and one second. And one the Ticat, or sorry, uh, an Alouette team that struggled mightily early. You mentioned one and seven. Going to even their record to one and one, matching the Ticats and the Bombers. And everybody in the East will be on the board. And that's a headline story after last year. Yeah. And that guy has been sitting in the meetings with Joaquin oh, Zero One. Working on the game with him, trying to teach him the differences. Nick Lewis, big, big help in the meeting rooms. It's important tonight for Cato and for Bridge. Tate throws back and catch made by Cedric Cunningham to the 25. You just think about all the quarterbacks in their first starts and how many throughout. You know, the last 20 years, we've seen just fall right on their face in game one. Although Nick Lewis provided one that he remembered. Uh, there's been time. Ryan Dinwiddie beat Calgary a few years ago in his first start with a, an incredible performance in Winnipeg. And Lewis mentioned that this week and said, don't count us out. Yeah, but for every every time there's, yes, there's one that has that Ricky Ray start or, you know, gets his first start. And, and wins in a big way. There's about 10 that don't get there. But this might be the first of more than a few for, for this guy. He looked great. Decision making, accuracy, poise, all there. First and 10 from the 25. Well, Tate dropped the ball, lost the handle, and he'll have to eat it at the 20. Montreal does not want to see this right at the end Bowman looked like he tripped or fell or rolled into Tate there and hate to lose the veteran this game in hand sack tonight 84th career sack Eastern All-Star. Blocked a field goal last week. Tries to cut back in. And his own man, it looked like, rolled yeah. on him. Klassen got pushed into him and. And an awkward fall at the end. Oh, he's getting pulled too yeah. by Shane Bergman. I'm slowly making his way to the sidelines. It's a good sign though. Five of the last six years, John Bowman has been in double figures in sacks. The only time it wasn't when he had an injury riddled season. For the middle, McDaniel off his fingertips. Briant has the interception. And he was headed for the sidelines and took a hit from Cedric Cunningham. But that's a third turnover on the night for Calgary. Well, I mentioned off the top, last week when they won, beat Hamilton, a walk-on field goal. They were minus four. And you don't have to win when you lose the giveaway takeaway. Snuck up on him tonight. Three first half interceptions for the Alouette defense last week, and they get one late here. But I'll, I'll say this, Chris. You know, I didn't think Calgary was complacent or looked like they were really overlooking or looking past Montreal. I didn't get that sense. I think they just got outplayed tonight. 
by a young quarterback they didn't know much about. Might be that kind of year where the 4% are going to be right sometimes. <laughs> that makes it fun. Talk about boosting the confidence of the football team when you knock off the champions. Take a knee one more time and this one will be done. Ottawa Red Black fans waiting for tomorrow. BC Lions will play their first game. Red Blacks have a chance to be the first 2-0 team. And the fans here saluting the Alouettes on an impressive CFL debut for Rakeem Cato. I see it's thundering her. That was quite a game. He has certainly made a dramatic entrance into the league. From the outset, impressive as the Alouettes post their first win and the defending Great Cup champions their first loss. Rakeem Cato with three touchdown passes, player of the game. And maybe in contention for player of the week. Nick Lewis defeats his old team. 29-11 the finals. So long from Montreal.